Hiya, this is a Creation Kit tutorial about putting your own dialogue and specifically your own voice acting into Skyrim using the Creation Kit. So, in order to do that, we want this chap here to say a few custom lines of dialogue. In this case, we first we need to create the voice type, which is over here under the character submenu. And we just need to create one of these for now. All, all it really is, is um, it's kind of a category that can be assigned to various actors. And it sort of, it essentially specifies a folder and default file names that can be generated by dialogue later on that we need to store things in. So you kind of need it. Um, it's very simple though, just create a new one and then you'll get this little dialogue here. And give it a unique name, I've just given it AAA Josh Voice because it's easier to find at the top and set the gender and you can don't worry about the default dialogue there for now don't need that on okay so once you've created your voice type you need to look at an actor so in this case I just made um, a Joshua again for an actor this chap here so you've got all of your um, actors sort of attributes you'll want to set those give them a name give them a short name give them all the basic things that you can find um, in the character creation tutorials but for the most part you can leave this blank for now what we're really going to be looking at here is the voice type and it's a very simple thing once you've created the guy once you've put things on there just set the voice type to this voice type that you cre just created just then so AAA Josh voice for me um, and you need to set that and just hit OK so now you've set a voice type to your actor what you need to do now is create the dialogue itself so in this case it is under the character menu again and then it's in the quest sub menu dialogues essentially a quest so you can create a new quest in this case I've got AAA Josh dialogue up here and if we open that up now normally all this stuff at the top won't be here so we'll just have a quest data so what you want to look at first is give it the unique ID give it a name I've just called it having an atta for now um, I've put it under the side quests category and what you also need to do is you can see here at the quest dialogue conditions you need to assign it to your actor so to speak so what we'll do here um, you'll normally create a new one but if you open up this one you can see it says get is ID um, equals one so that means that if the character in question is the one we're looking for then it will it will run the quest in this case we need to set this little button here which will originally um, by default will say empty we need to click on that and it will give us a list of stuff eventually from the object ID so what we need to look at is you find your actors name there so I found them selected it don't need to say OK there but normally you will and then you click OK on that so that means that basically it will now apply to your actor once you've done that you need to OK it, drop back out bring it back up again once it's back up again you should have all these extra tabs at the top now so you're able to put dialogue in so first thing we need to drop to is dialogue views here um, and you'll have this this should be blank at the top so what you need to do is create a new one of these it'll give it a unique name you probably won't be able to call it the name it gives it because you'll have to add something to that because it needs to be unique and that'll match the the actual quest name so I just added 01 to it and it'll create this new view now this one's been populated with a bunch of stuff but as you can see here there's a bunch of topics and each one kind of links to the other now you can do that just by dragging and dropping them together but first we need to create a master topic that's this yellow one here it's the first thing they're going to say to you when you say hello to them so when you create that you'll just literally create branch and then once that's been created you need to populate it so what you'll do is you'll click on this top yellow bit here and you will have that you can see topic text so change that. I've changed that to hello um, and you can add there you've got all of these responses here as well so you'll create a new one of those in this case we've already got one so we'll open that up now as you can see there, there's a second page here where you can change the text there you can say has lip file in this case we're going to say yes because we want it to generate animations for the speech so that it will it will generate an animation file that matches your your audio files which is pretty cool um, there's a few things like if it'll only say it once goodbye if you take that it means that it will end the conversation and a few other things but in this case we're looking at putting the audio in so you have this response text you can create that and that can bring up an additional dialogue here 
So you can add your response text. There's a bunch of other things. Um, you can set the emotion that they have there, so um, you can set an value for that as well. It's quite subtle, I found, in the game with many characters. But say you want to set him to happy 100, then he'll be smiling when he says it. You know, um, that kind of stuff. And it does kind of add quite a bit to it, you'll find. that It just adds that little bit extra to the character. Um, now, it says here there's a voice file name, and it's generated one here, but normally it will generate it. This is where the voice type that we created earlier comes into play. So, what you would normally have to do is view valid NPCs for this voice type. Now, there's only one here in the list, and that's because of the voice type that we've assigned to the character in that, now at the quest. So, you can select that, and it will have um, a path. Now, that's what it's done, it's defined a path there, and that's where it's taken your audio from. So, in this case, we need to create some audio. So, if you do that, though, add those valid NPCs to this voice type, add the extra information you need to click OK and jump back in before you can do that a lot of the time so we'll open that back up again say OK OK open it back up and you should have this voice file name then generated but what we need to do first is actually get some audio to put in there's a couple of options there's a record option down here which means that the creation kit can if you want to create placeholder text quickly the creation kit can just do that itself which is quite handy um, but it's not ideal. You're not going to get amazingly good results with that. So what I tend to use, I'm using Cubase 5 here. You can use whatever you want. If you're a bit strapped for budget, I would recommend Reaper because it lets you use a trial version, but it's still quite professional. The other thing you'll want to get is a decent microphone and a good audio interface. If you can afford that, then you know, you're know you golden. Otherwise, you may have some problems with quality. So I use a large diaphragm condenser microphone, and I'm using the Profire 2626 interface here, but that's quite expensive. You can probably get something a lot cheaper that will do a decent job. Um, but in this case, I've recorded in Cubase a bunch of dialogue files, and these are just quick things. You may not be able to hear them because this won't record the audio, but now then, lad, what's the crack? if you could hear that, um, if not, I'll splice it in later. Then there's a few little few little lines there that I've chopped up. Now all you need to do is put them. I've put some effects on to kind of clean them up a little bit, and a bit of compression to make them a little bit you know louder and a little bit more better dynamically. Nothing great. Don't need to put reverb on because the game actually applies that on its own, which is quite useful. Um, we can save these out as individual files. So that's you know a pretty simple process. Now, once I've done that and you've saved out your files, you need to tell it to look at these files in the game. Now, here's, here's the thing where it gets a little bit tricky. The game likes to use a compressed format. So, if we're looking at that kind of thing, we can go into... Um, the compressed format is XWM. So, I've got some audio tools here. Now, there's a, a thing that can... Since you're probably going to export to WAV, and you probably want to export to decent quality WAV, you've got these WAV files here that you've made. So, there's a couple of them there. Using multi XWM, which there's a link to at the bottom of the page there, um, in the description, you can just, it's a really simple utility. You just add your audio files, pick them, set it to the highest output quality, 192 kilobytes a second, um, and then go WAV to XWM. Now, doing that, just hit start and it should just do it automatically. I've got a couple of errors, but it seemed to do it fine anyway once I check them. But the out, then it goes to this output file in your XW, multi XWM folder. So if you go to that, there's an XWM there, right? Do they? He says. That's one of the lines there. Now, what we need to do after that is move it. So we're going to create this directory that you can see here under data, sound, voice, and it has the name of your mod will be one of the folders and then the name of your character. So you need those two names here. If we go into data for Skyrim, in your Skyrim directory, there will be a sound folder. So you have Skyrim, data, sound, and then voice. You may have to create these directories, but they will work. And then you have, say, Skyrim.esm, there's one, but musictest02.esp, which is the name of this, this um, project. So if we open that up, well, create it if you need to, which you probably will. If you create that, then create one that's the name of your character, and it'll be listed there. Then in there, we've got a bunch of music files. Now, these have already been done, but you can see these bottom ones have the normal names. You'll need the WAV and the XWM. 
The reason for this is that it seems to only be able to generate lip files and animations from a WAV, but XWM is much more compressed, so once you're using your finished mod, you want to be able to tick out your WAVs and just use the XWM files because they're a lot more, a lot more useful, um, and they're a lot smaller. So in this case, you pop your two files in. Um, what you need to do then, once you've got them in there, is that you will find the file that pertains to this. You will go get the voice file name, select that, Control C, or copy, go over to here, find the file that you're looking for, that you want to apply that to, and rename both the XWM and the WAV to that. So in this case, you know, there's these ones here. So these have already been renamed. Now once you've got those renamed to that, you can then go out of there, and you can see here that it should all work. Now you click OK, you can drop back in again if you want that should all be applied. Now it's pointing at that, what you need to do is you hit the from WAV down here at the bottom, you want to generate these animations, and it's quite a quick process, you just click from WAV, um, sorry, select your voice file there, hit from WAV, and it should, it won't do at the minute, <laughs> it's decided not to, but um, that generate lip file will be ungrayed out so then you can generate the lip file for that waveform the there you go it's brought it up so once you've generated the lip file which it should let you do you can cancel there and you can OK out of there rather the lip file should be generated in this folder so you can see here there's .xwm and .wav but there's also this .lip here So once it's generated that, you've got all of the files that you need. So you can go out of there. You have your dialog all created. Now after that, if you want to, you can create other lines of dialog that go from it. Now each one of those, it's the same process. Just drop it in there, and it should work. So what I've what I've done here is I've created a few branches of dialog. It's quite simple to do. You just create more like you did before. Um, the only thing you may want to change is the in the list here. It's a bit easier to do in the play a dialog tab and there's all of these same things in list form so it's quite easy and down here you've got this branch data so you can have top level top level means that they'll say it as soon as they meet you and then there's normal normal will generally be afterwards so they won't be until they're unlocked by something else so you need to go back to dialog views If we wait for that to come up. And then you can kind of link them just by dragging two other ones there. It seems to be the quickest way of doing it. It looks a bit strange, but it does work. Okay, anyway, so once you've got all those together, in this case I've created a bunch of responses that are going to move on to other things. A few of these are like goodbye at the end, um, other, little, other little sayings, but the audio should now work. So if we pop into Skyrim. Okay, so here we are in the game. Um... And here's a character, so we're just going to say hello to him. Now then, lad, what's the crack? So there you go, you can see his lips has kind of synced to that. It's not amazingly good, but it's certainly decent. So you can just have a few of these dialogue choices, and he'll say them. Hold on, hold on. Come again? Right. Do they look impressed, then? Ha! Not surprised, fella, the way you go. So there you go, you can see it all working there, and that's um, custom dialogue.